Welcome to Regime Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 112 of ASP.NET video series. In this video, we'll discuss about ASP.NET custom server controls. In the ASP.NET video series, in parts 104 to 111, we discussed about building ASP.NET user controls. If you haven't watched those videos, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session. At the link that you can see here, you can find all the videos that are uploaded by me arranged in a logical sequence into YouTube playlist. So if you want to find parts 104 to 111 from the ASP.NET video series, you can use the link that you can see here. So what's the type of control that we're going to build today? The control looks something like this that you can see in the image here. It's going to contain this text box, image button, and the calendar. When the composite custom control, that's when this calendar control initially loads up on the page, the user should be able to see only the text box and the image button. The calendar should be invisible on the initial load. And then when the user clicks the image button, that's when the calendar should become visible. And then as soon as the user selects a date from the calendar, that selected date should be populated into the text box and the calendar should become invisible. If you remember, in parts 104 to 111, we have discussed about doing exactly the same thing but as an user control, as an ASP.NET user control. In this session, we'll, we'll discuss about rebuilding the same control, but as an ASP.NET composite custom control. And in a later video session, we'll talk about the differences between user controls and composite custom controls. In fact, that's a very important interview question. Let's see how to build this control. And another important thing to keep in mind is that when we are building ASP.NET user controls, we had you know a graphical designer to build the user interface of that user control. User control files have the extension of .ascx. And then um, if we want to build this interface graphically, all we did was drag and drop the text box button and calendar controls onto that ASCX file. But when we were build when you, when we are building composite custom controls, you know you cannot build the user interface graphically like that because there is no designer associated with composite custom controls. So the user interface of a composite custom control has to be done completely in code. Okay, let's see how to actually do that. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a project. So file new project and then from the installed templates section select web and I'm going to choose ASP.NET server control as the project type. I'm going to call this as custom controls and I'm going to create that in C drive. So click OK. This should create an ASP.NET server control project. And the first thing that I'm going to do is rename the server control 1.cs to custom calendar.cs. So I'm going to change this to a meaningful file name. So custom calendar.cs. And that should give you an alert message. Click S on that. OK, so custom calendar.cs. And then I'm going to get rid of all the code that I have here, the default code that's generated by Visual Studio. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. And then I'm going to delete this default property attribute. And then I'm going to retain this toolbox data attribute. Now, if you don't understand the purpose of this toolbox data attribute at the moment, don't worry. We are going to talk about this in our next video session when we actually use this custom calendar control in an ASP.NET Web Application project. Okay, but for now, I'm going to make a change to this toolbox data attribute. Instead of having this server control one, I'm going to call this actually custom calendar. Okay, because our control is a custom calendar control. I'm going to do the same thing for the closing. Okay, now this attribute is actually used to render the default tag when we drag and drop this custom composite custom control from the toolbox onto a web form. As I told you, if it's not clear at the moment, don't worry. It'll be much clearer when we discuss about using this composite custom control in an ASP.NET web application project. Okay, so that's the first change we have done. We have changed this toolbox data attribute to have a meaningful tag custom calendar. And then look at this, the custom calendar is actually a class. And the most important thing to keep in mind here is that this custom calendar is inheriting from web control. But remember, we are going to build a composite custom control. So in ASP.NET, there is another class called composite control class. So I'm going to make my custom calendar actually inherit from composite control 
class. So why are we doing this? Because this base class, the composite control base class, contains all the functionality that is required by any ASP.NET composite control. So it makes sense to make your, uh, rather than we re-implementing all those features again, we can actually inherit from that class and we get all those functions. Okay, for example, in a bit you will see what are the different functions that we are going to override to make this an ASP.NET Composite Custom Control. Okay, so that's the first step. Make your class inherit from Composite Control uh, Base class. And then if you look at the, the calendar control, the custom calendar control, it has three child controls. The text box control, the image button, and the calendar. So we need all these controls as child controls. So we need those objects. Now if you remember, if it was a user control, simply you drag and drop the control from the tool blocks onto the ASCX file. But this is not a user control. This is a composite custom control, and these are created completely in code. So you can't really use a graphical designer. You have to do that in code. And we need these three child controls, text box, image button, and calendar. So let me go ahead and have a declaration for those three child controls. So copy those, and then within my class, I'm going to paste that. So I need a text box, image button, and calendar. Okay. Now the next most important thing to do is, you know, to create the child controls itself. So how do I create child controls? Okay. So this custom calendar control is going to contain all these three controls as child controls. Uh, we we have the declarations for them, but we need to create these child controls. Okay, so to create child controls, we can actually override a method that is provided by this base class, composite control class. Okay, so as soon as I type override, and then when I press space, I can see all the methods and properties that we can override. Okay, so I want to override this method create child controls method. Okay, look at that. This create child controls is actually coming from the control base class. Okay, so where is control base class? Our class is actually inheriting from composite control class. It's not inheriting from, you know, the control class. But if you look at this composite control class, if I right click on that, say go to definition, this composite control class is inheriting from web control, and web control is actually inheriting from the control base class. So indirectly, our custom calendar class is inheriting from the control base class. And if you look at the control base class, it has got this create child control. So if I press control F here and then type create child controls and find next, look at that. We have this create child controls method defined as a virtual method in that base control class. Now we need to override that method in order to create the child controls that, that are going to be part of our custom calendar. Okay, so type override and then press space and then create child controls. Now if you press tab, it's going to build the method skeleton for us automatically. Okay, so what we are going to do here, we are going to create child controls. All we need to do here is clear, you know, any other controls that may exist using controls.clear proper method and then uh, create an instance of the text box, image button, assign IDs and then add those controls to the controls collection property of this custom calendar control. Okay, and that's what this code is exactly doing here. So let me copy that just to save some time in typing and paste that here. So what's the first line here? The first line controls dot clear. And if you look at the IntelliSense, what is it doing? Removes all controls from the current server controls uh, control collection property. So remove any other controls and then what we are doing, we are creating an instance of text box, giving it an ID, and then setting the width of the text box to 80 pixels so that the text box is not too wide. I am limiting the width of the text box. So if you look at the width property, it's actually expecting a unit. So that's why we are passing in an unit class and then pixel static method. Okay, so here the width of the text box is 80 pixels. And similarly, image button, we are assigning an ID for that calendar assigning an ID for that. And finally, what we are doing, we are actually adding the child controls to custom calendar control using, uh, you know, the controls collection property. So to this instance of this custom calendar, add a text box to the controls collection property. Similarly, we are adding the image button and the calendar. So that's the second step. Override create child controls method. 
okay this one more to do so all we have done until now is created these child controls you know declarations for these child controls you have we have created them by overriding the create child controls method now the next step is to actually render them to the client and to do that we have to override another method that is coming from this base class okay so that's the render method so again if we type override and then press space Visual Studio should show us all the methods that we can override. So render, okay. So composite control class contains this render method. So I'm going to override that. Press tab now. It's going to generate the you know the skeleton for us automatically. And the important thing to keep in mind here is that it takes in HTML text writer object as an input parameter, which is actually going to render these three controls for us. All we need to do right now is to render the text box, image button, and calendar. Okay. So let's copy paste that piece of code in that method and we are done okay so very simple we are done actually building the composite custom control here three simple steps okay um, create this project as an ASP.NET server control project give it give the file a meaningful name uh, in our case we called it custom calendar.cs and then within the toolbox data attribute give your tag a meaningful name and then make your class inherit from the composite control base class which contains all the functionality required by any ASP.NET composite control and then whatever are going to be the child controls have declarations for them override create child controls method to create those child controls and finally override the render method that's it now in our next video session we'll actually discuss about using or first loading this composite custom control into your toolbox and then dragging and dropping that custom control from the toolbox onto an ASP.NET web application project and consuming it in that project. We'll discuss about that in our next video session. On this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.